But uh, this one is Charleston White. We believe in being tough. And I'm pretty sure, of course, he's talking about some niggas, bro. I'm telling you, it's the black community. We believe in being tough. It's not even Charleston White. I mean, he's saying that, but it's not even like him. He's speaking on us. You know what I mean? Okay. Prison reform is, is essential. It's real. It's very essential. Yeah, very essential. Uh, the, you have to understand, homie. There was t there was twenty or thirty years of, of our country, who 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 believed that that we should be tough on crime. And and they became tough on crime. So not only did they create s sentencing guidelines, that's where the three strikes come in. The minimum sentencing guidelines came came in that was completely uh unjust and, and unfair particularly to us uh that's where you start seeing children going to prison at 15 and 16 years old uh when when we have all the the the, the, the evidence we have all the the research we have all the medical and, and science information that says that the human brain don't develop to at or around 25. Mm. so why would you take a 17 year old a 20 year old and sentence them to, to life without parole when they don't even have the full brain development to make the rational decision that you and I would make in certain situations. Uh, if you factor in child trauma, you factor in the abuse, you factor in neglect, uh, that brain may not develop to 30. That's why you hear these old ass niggas like Jay-Z and them hollering 40 is the new 30. That's the lack of brain development for us to even think to process that. 30 is the new 20. Th that's us really saying we're really fucked up. Mm. Damn, well, what what y'all think about that, bro? This this, this nigga fucking talking, bro. He all he always speaking, bro. But he ain't just chatting, bro. He ain't yapping either, bro. He actually be spitting, bro. Look how serious he is, bro. Like this ain't no jokes. Like I, I don't know if uh, Fam G is gonna interview him in this one, but it looks like he just with Cam on this one. So I missed this interview. I didn't I didn't watch it live. But There's no way the thirty can be the new twenty. Right now, you know. You have to think backwards. But it, but you take it out of context. No, I'm not. What's in the man's heart come out of his mouth? If you say 40 is the new 30, you don't. So that means you're a 40 year old. You still looking 30? No, bro. He, what are you saying? Then? He, but uh, I remember uh, that that song. 30 is the new 20. Yeah, I'm so hot. Yeah, uh, he's. It, it's, he's still rapping about dope in his songs and now. That's song cool. God is. But, but you, there, just like a lot of things, has been taken out of context. It was more or less like, yo, even though I'm older, I'm still able to, you know, live a life that... Not like a 30-year-old. That's the problem with the black man. He okay. won't grow up. He won't grow up. He mm -hmm. still want to be 40 and live like he's 30. What's wrong with being 40 and living like you're 40? Mm -hmm. Why you still want to live younger? The now, the thing is, I do have a question about that for anybody out there that wants to answer. For anybody that is a certain age, like as, for example, 30 to 40 or whatever, what is acting 30 to 40? What dictates acting a certain way at 30 to 40? I, w I, would, I would love to know, I would love to hear, like, what everybody thinks about that. I, I just want to know. I, I just want to understand, like, help me understand what, what, what dictates... 30 to 40 like what does it what does it do like how do you, how should you act you know what i mean like most of these people that he's probably referring to they have an increasingly large amount of money stuff like that like they have they've have assets stuff like that like you know what i mean but you may deem them as childish if they have more money than a majority of us and like you know assets all this stuff like that all the things you need supposedly for 30 to 40 how are they not acting that age? Like, but please explain. It's a genuine question. I'm actually asking. I want to know. And if you have the answers, please let me know. But if you don't, just ignore the question and we'll roll into the video. It's not a big deal. The goal is to Maybe go we'll get to it another day. Not get younger. Mm -hmm. So the goal ain't to keep all mm -hmm. my black hair. The goal ain't to go and put a whole bunch of pretty white new teeth in my mouth the old I get. I'm going to lose a side tooth. It's okay. I'm the getting old. <laughs> Nigga, I'm going to get a bald spot. It's okay. I ain't got to go get the man we. What? So that's what's happening, homie. We, what's, we shaming old. So that's why the old nigga said, oh, look at you old nigga. Because we shame to be old. Ooh. So I Okay, okay. So I, I, was, I, I was popping off a little early, a little bit with the rant there. But um, it's not even a rant. But... It just he's speaking on not accepting the the flaws of age. Now now that I can get behind. That's fine. I feel like um 
I mean, I don't know. Like, I, honestly, I, I don't know. With the age thing, it could be many things. Like, I don't know. If you go bald, maybe your hair is your thing. You know what I mean? Like, you're going bald, bro. Like, maybe, maybe bald don't work for you, big dog. Like, I understand it. I get it. And now I haven't heard of uh, Tyler Oliveira. He is shame to old. Ain't nothing wrong with 40 being 40, my nigga. Yeah. But what got you on to this activism in the community? Uh... Because I had people who, who, who poured into me when I was a fool. So, so before I got out the juvenile system, uh, I, I wasn't exposed to gangs. Yes, sir. Uh, I grew up in an upper middle class neighborhood with white kids from the third grade. I don't know nothing about the hood shit. Nigga, I used to go to my ain't beating them house and see them nigga with the blue flags. And then I saw that shit on colors on TV. I ain't know what that shit was until I went into the juvenile system. So when I got into the juvenile system, you see rolling 60 Crips, you see rolling 30 Crips, you got Altadena Block Crips, you got Original Swamp Compton Crips, you got Fire Deuce Hoover Crips, you got GDs, you got uh, Black Gangster Disciples, you got Spanish Gang, so you got all these different gangs. And it ain't no football team. And I'm going to be here for the next four to seven uh, years. Get in where you fit in. Correct. Because this is the boy sport in here. So, nigga, I joined the game. I never heard and, of it. And when I got introduced to it, Coming from a, and I want to say this to all the mamas, coming from a single parent home with just mama in the house, never been spanked by a man, never been disciplined by a man, never had a hug from a man, never been kicked in the ass by the man. When I got introduced to the gang, it was everything I was looking for. Nigga, I got an uncle in the gang. I got a big homie. I got a nigga playing OG mm. just like the daddy. Yeah. I got brothers. I These got are your male figures. That there you, are. you go. And they ain't number two, three years older than me. Yes, sir. It's like the nigga in the ninth grade looking up to the senior. Sure. It's like the nigga in the eighth grade looking up to the eleventh grader. He like a big, yeah. big homie. He like daddy. It's like the nigga in the sixth grade looking up to the nigga just got in college. He's still a kid, too. Mm. But the sixth grade nigga don't know this. Correct. These the big homies now, nigga. These the daddies. These the uncles. And, nigga, I fit right in, and I became the little homie everybody loved. Yeah. And I worked my way up the rankings, showing out for them niggas. I just want to be accepted, nigga, so I'm going to do what these niggas won't do. I'm the little nigga. I'm the little nigga all the big homies love. So, yeah, nigga, so, uh, but it's people He's like me fast, that's sitting bro. back coming to work every day looking at this little nigga, reading books. Looking at him, his test scores, seeing he's smart, he got potential. His mama coming to see him. Mm -hmm. He making phone calls, he getting mail, he getting cards, he getting letters. Man, this little boy playing. These other kids ain't getting none of this. So you got workers who sitting back looking at the dynamics of all these kids they work with. And it's their job to say, man, why y'all hanging together? Y'all don't fit together. So it was the workers who were seeing the good in me. I ain't seeing the good in me because I'm playing bad. They yeah. seeing past the act. It's a facade. It's just a facade. I mean, I'm playing. Nigga, I ain't even none of this shit. That's why I'm so easy to quit when I got my senses. So, if some niggas get stuck playing that because they don't have no out. You said, you said something, though, and I want you to say it. Uh, nigga, I got an out. I'm smart. Yeah. Nigga, I can, I, I can pass my GED. I can take college courses. Nigga, I can go <clears> before <throat> the parole board and though. look at all these white people out and talk. It's a lot of niggas can't. Yeah. So, they don't have no out. Nigga, they ain't got no mama sending them scriptures. They ain't got no mama calling and praying with them. They ain't got none of it. So they ain't, I'm hanging with these niggas with no app, but I got an app. Yes, sir. So it was the workers who made me realize, homie, uh, you bullshitting. So when it was time for me to go back to court, uh, part of the law is uh, you go, to the, go into the juvenile system until you're 18. Uh, 30 days prior to your 18th birthday, you go back before your sentencing judge. And the sentencing judge will make a determination of uh, whether you're going to be transferred to the adult prison system, whether you're paroled or you're recommitted back into the custody of the youth system. Now, if you're recommitted, then that means the juvenile system has jurisdiction over you until you're 21. You get out at 21 and you're free. Your record is sealed. If you go to prison, then you do the remaining of your 12 years. So I'd already done four years at this time on 12. My, my victim's family played a, played a big part in, in me not going to prison uh, because they, they, was a, they was a forgiving white family. Mm. So I could never be oh, angry and hate white people because I took a, a white man's life only for their family to be loving and forgiving. 
don't, and so it's hard for me to, 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 to develop hate. Uh, in my heart. I hate things, but I don't hate people. That's crazy. I never knew that about him. So, uh, so I actually got to look look at these people and, and hear the words, uh, I forgive you, uh, we forgive you. Not only that, uh, I had a compassionate judge. Uh, my judge is the same judge who, who, who sentenced the, the little white kid, Ethan Couch, to the, to, the four, to the 10 years probation for those four DWI murders. Yeah, uh, judge Jean Boyd. So in, in her defense, uh, many people believe she should have sent that little white kid to prison. Uh, and many people believe she should have sent me to prison because that was a recommendation for the state for me to be transferred to the adult prison system. Remember I told you my mother said not, I, I'm not asking for him to be released. If I would have been released at 18, I would bring it home the gang bang in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, at 21, I brought home the youth advocate mind mm -hmm. because in, in those three years, uh, I, I began to work the programs. Uh, hold on, hold on, sit tight real quick. So you say at 18, you went back in front of the judge yeah. for uh, a transfer hearing. To go transfer to hearing. Your mom had the, the opportunity to either say... I, I would have been paroled home that day. I would have came home and been on parole for three years. Mm. And, and, and free, and in free. essence, but you had parole. Yeah, I would have been free. I could have, yeah, yeah, at 18 years old. And she said what? They, the judge specifically said, Miss White, are you asking for your son to be released today? Uh, and my mama looked at me and looked at the judge and said, no, Your Honor. Mm. I think he need to go back and work the programs because they were great programs. Uh, it, they was programmed that focused on, on, on not just too? rehabilitation, uh, but re-socialization and, and repairing a, a child uh, from, from the childhood trauma that most children uh, who commit these type of crimes endure. Uh, I hadn't really had no trauma, homie, that I thought at the time, other than the fact that my daddy wasn't there. That alone is trauma. Mm -hmm. That alone is traumatizing. Yes, sir. Uh, on, on top of the fact that your mother is there and she's not there, that's even more traumatizing. On top of the fact that you're having surgeries where you're being put to sleep, which is hindering some brain functions, right? So, uh, so I learned a lot in, in those three years, but there's a fast growing well, process from 18 to 21 where a kid can develop and grow uh, at, at such a rate it, it surprises many. Uh, it's not a big difference from 18 to 21, but if you nurture a, a child and you put a child in the right environment, in, 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 in the right setting, uh, that kid can grow to full potential in three years. And, and that's what happened with me. So, so within three years, so from 18 to, to 21, I went from playing the leader of the rolling 60 game to within two years. Uh, and, and, and this wasn't me fronting. Uh, this, was the, this was the real me. I was fronting as a gang member. Mm -hmm. Uh, this was the real me excelling. Uh, homie, they used to take me off campus. That's where I told you I spoke at Blinn College. I spoke yeah, at yeah, Texas A&M, yeah. Prairie View, every college in around there, UT, uh, the Aggies, uh, all the high schools. So my last year and a half, two years of being locked up, I would go out and do public speaking and motivational speaking at colleges and universities and high schools. So they groomed me for this. It's just that when I got out at, at 21 in 1998, my record was sealed, uh, no felony convictions, but my identity was tied inside the juvenile system. So I came back out here, nigga, with a murder case that everybody know as a, you know, nigga, so, nigga, we root for the killer. So I come back to my peers who I know from school, nigga, I'm known as a nigga who caught a murder case. Those are accolades. Live long enough. Yeah. That's crazy, so, too, bro. That is the accolade, bro. I mean, luckily for him, that's not his main accolade now, but... At some point, it probably was for him. Just like how he was like clapping at the end right there, like that was probably his main accolade right there, bro. But let me know, man. He he was he was throwing out some heavy hitters there, bro. Let me know what y'all think, bro. And like, do I have to say something? Like, I, I need I need to hear some thoughts there, bro. He said quite a bit, and it was a ton. It was some heavy topics. So go ahead and uh, let me know something.